In this lesson, we're going to talk about RBAC, role-based access control. Data on tap supports RBAC, where we can have different administrators with different levels of access to the system. The way that this is set up is really similar to how it's done on other vendors systems so if you've configured RBAC on really anything before this should look pretty familiar to you the way it's configured is that access to commands is granted to different roles and users are then assigned a role we have built-in roles included which would be appropriate for most needs, but if they're not, you can also configure your own custom roles. Administrators can be authenticated by either the local user database, by an NIS or LDAP server, or by Active Directory. When we do the lab demo, I'll show you how to configure it using the local database and also how to use Active Directory for the authentication and administrators can be separately granted access to the console or to the GUI, to the command line, to the API if you've got some other software that is integrating with data on tap or to the service processor or for any combination of all of them. We have different levels of administrators. The top level is the cluster administrators. Cluster administrators can configure the entire cluster, including its SVMs. Each storage virtual machine also has a separate administrator authentication domain and can be managed independently by its own administrators. So if we had a Department A SVM and a Department B SVM, we would have three different administrative domains. Department A administrators could configure the Department A SVM resources, Department B administrators could configure Department B, and cluster administrators could configure the entire cluster, including Department A and Department B. Only cluster administrators can use the System Manager GUI. SVM administrators can use the command line or API. And this slide shows the built-in cluster scope rules. They are admin, auto support, backup, read only and none. If a user has the admin cluster scope rule, that means that they are a super user, they can do anything on the system. They can configure all the cluster level resources and they can also configure the SVM level resources. Auto support, that's a special role for the auto support account. When the system is first built, there's two accounts by default. That's the admin account and the auto support account. Our other cluster scope roles, we've got backup. This is another special account. This is for backup software that is going to be backing up at the cluster level. We're going to talk about backup in a later lesson. Read-only, self-explanatory, if a user has the read-only role, then they can view everything at the cluster level, but they can't make any changes. And the last cluster scope role is none. For a customized role, the commands and command directories for which you do not specify an access level have the default level of none. That's why it's there. And the role has no access to unspecified commands or command directories. So when you create a customized role, you have to explicitly grant access to what you want that administrator to be able to do. We also have our data SVM scope roles. VS Admin is the super user account at the SVM level. So they can manage the resources for that SVM, but they can't manage cluster level resources. Users with the VS Admin role can manage their own user accounts. They can manage volumes, queue trees, and LUNs in that particular SVM. They can configure the NAS and SAN protocols and services such as DNS and monitor the SVM resources. VS Admin volume is similar to the VS Admin role, but not quite so powerful. It can't manage accounts. If a user has the VS Admin volume role, they can manage volumes, QTs, and LUNs, configure NAS and SAN protocols, configure services, and monitor the SVM. 
Users with the VS Admin protocol role can configure NAS and SAN protocols and also configure services and monitor the SVM. And the VS Admin read only role is pretty self explanatory. They can monitor the SVM resources, they can view volumes and LANs, view services and protocols, but they can't configure them. We also have VS Admin Backup which is designed for backup software to access the cluster at the SVM level. So the cluster scope backup rule can view and backup the cluster as a whole. The SVM scope backup rule can only view and backup that particular SVM. Okay, so those are the different built-in rules. They'll normally meet your needs, but you can create custom rules. I'll show you how to do that in the lab. Another thing that you are very likely to want to do is to configure Active Directory integration. You don't want to manage a separate user database for your NetApp administrators. It's going to be more convenient for you and for them if they can log in using their Active Directory username and password. I'll also show you how to configure that in the lab too. If a cluster already has a data SVM with SIFS configured, then you can use it as the authentication tunnel. The command for that is security login domain tunnel create and then the vServer name. But if the cluster does not have a data SVM with SIFS server created already, then you can join any data SVM to the domain and use it as the authentication tunnel without the need for a SIFS license. To do that, the command is vServer Active Directory create and then again the vServer name. So let's have a look at how to configure role based access control and Active Directory integration for our administrator authentication in the lab.